Propaganda has been very significant throughout the course of history. The most well-known uses of propaganda occurred in the World War II era by both the Americans and the Germans. I think propaganda would be the intentional dissemination of something that's not true for the purposes of advancing your own political or social agenda. In other words, lying on purpose uh, in order to get your way. Both parties use techniques such as the big lie and scapegoats. The big lie is when a group or person lies to their audience to enforce their viewpoints. The Nazis used numerous methods of propaganda in the 1936 Berlin Olympics and when coming to power in order to gain followers. Hitler was trying to show that the Aryans were the supreme race and that Jews and other minorities were infecting Germany. On October 30th, 1931, Hitler and the Nazis were given a perfect chance to gain followers. The Olympic Committee granted Berlin the Summer and Winter Games of 1936. The Minister of Propaganda, Joseph Goebbels, found many ways to use propaganda to promote the Nazi regime. Radio was a very, very important uh, medium at that time, as well as newspaper, print. Um, there were a lot of posters, propaganda posters posted in the, the streets. Uh, they used uh, movies very, very effectively. The 1930s was an era of big, big movies. He sent out pictures of him and Hitler signing autographs. Colorful posters and flags were hung all over Germany. Signs condemning Jews were taken away during the games, and the city's gypsies were sent to concentration camps. They pulled off um, the most elaborate games that had ever been presented before. They dazzled their uh, German and their foreign visitors. Uh, they really pulled the wool over people's eyes, effectively. They tried to show off the Aryan race through the success of the German team. They only allowed Aryans to participate on the team, which eliminated all minorities. Only two half-Jewish athletes were allowed in the team. He also aimed some of his propaganda at children because they were the future generation. For example, there was a children's book written by Julius Stryker called The Poisonous Mushroom. It talks about how Jews are like poisonous mushrooms and that they are dangerous to Germans. Methods like this were used all of the time. Hitler lied to all of Germany to have his ideas be believed. Goebbels said, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually come to believe it. The lie can be maintained only for such a time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic, and or military consequences of the lie. It thus becomes vitally important the state to use all of its powers to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. This explains what the Nazi regime truly did. The lie they told everyone was that Jews caused all of Germany's misfortune and that the Aryan race was superior. With the use of their propaganda, this lie was soon believed. The Berlin Olympics set off a chain of events. Next came the Holocaust, and after that, World War II. Americans' use of propaganda was very effective during the war. They used many types of propaganda. The most common method used was posters. There were almost 200,000 different designs printed. They were used to promote war bonds, carpooling, victory gardens, rationing of materials, women workers, support for the war in general, and to discourage careless talk. War bonds are a loan to the government used for the military that they will pay back with interest. Victory gardens are vegetable gardens that the government wanted citizens to plant in order to prevent food shortages and to be able to give more food to the soldiers. Carpooling was instated to save gasoline for the war. Women were urged to go to work because of the loss of workers when men went to war. They asked citizens to ration materials such as tires, sugar, processed food, and more. They also ran advertisements supporting the war. They usually weren't promoting specific products, just war ideas. Along with this, many companies linked their products with the war. Editorial cartoonists tried to sway the public's opinion by having superheroes beating Adolf Hitler and other disliked political figures. Popular stories were also altered to have a war twist. This type of propaganda was aimed at children and their parents. In the army now. <laughs> you fellas can laugh, but you'd better quit playing around and get down to work. Buy bonds. Help support our national defense program. So you'll be prepared for the big bad wolf. Another form of propaganda was radio broadcasts. The news stations worked war themes into the daily news. 
Books were also very influential. They were used in post-combat. Movies had war plots incorporated into them, with Nazis and the Japanese portrayed as villains. Films for troops educated and trained them, while films for the general public had propaganda. Newspapers and magazines were also widely circulated. During World War II, the Americans weren't sure whether or not the Japanese could be trusted. Some believed that there were some Japanese spies. Pearl Harbor also caused fear in a lot of Americans. The government dealt with this by relocating roughly 110,000 Japanese Americans and Japanese who lived along the Pacific coast. They put them in places called war relocation camps, also known as internment camps. There, many Japanese were housed, some aliens, but mostly they were U.S. citizens. The government tried to tell the public that they were doing this for national security. They made it seem like the Japanese were living a normal life in these camps. They showed pictures of Japanese people smiling and looking happy. The government made propaganda-filled videos that showed the Japanese people living a regular life. The army provided housing and plenty of healthful, nourishing food for all. The residents of the new community set about developing a way of life as nearly normal as possible. They held church services, Protestant, Catholic, and Buddhist. They issued their own newspaper, organized nursery schools, and some made camouflage nets for the United States Army. This was not true. Many people living in the camps were extremely malnourished. They were not living a life close to normal in the camps. They had to leave all that they had worked for their entire lives behind. The idea of propaganda and how it was used in the World War II era is a turning point in history because it changed how propaganda can be used today. Propaganda is still used, but not to the same extent. The propaganda in these scenarios had drastic effects. In the Berlin Olympics, the use of propaganda ended up causing the deaths of over 11 million people. Although the propaganda used in World War II was for a better cause, it still changed what millions of people believed. The Japanese internment camps' use of propaganda led to the U.S. to allow the government to intern over 100,000 people of Japanese descent. Nothing to this extent has happened since, and most likely never will. The methods of propaganda used then, such as the big lie and scapegoats, can't be used today because now people are further aware of what is going on. The World War II era's use of propaganda was a wake-up call for many civilians. Now news stations can't lie to their audiences and use methods that were used back then. But um, I haven't really experienced in this day and age an organized, coherent, systematic uh, campaign of propaganda uh, that's been directed towards me on a story I'm working on. Without the use of propaganda in the Berlin Olympics, World War II, and Japanese internment camps, the world might never have become aware. News stations now have evolved, and while what they do can be defined as propaganda, it has a different meaning. I don't think there's any comparison between what Hitler did and what our government does. I think that there are people, obviously, that try to cover things up, which is a, maybe a different sort of thing. Instead, news organizations today try to get their viewpoints to be heard through promoting an agenda. An agenda is what points a news station wants to get across to its viewers. Everybody has their own viewpoint or their own take or their own prism that they looked at an issue through. Uh, and so they try to um, emphasize uh, emphasize their take on an issue or their perspective by the words they choose and the language that they choose and the talking points, the subjects that they choose uh, uh, to use when describing an issue. News stations today withhold the truth, select specific viewpoints to share, and use information that is plausible, no matter if it is actually true. For instance, Fox News is a notoriously right-handed or Republican network. They mainly don't cover stories that don't back up their beliefs or they put a Republican spin on it so that their viewers only have one option for an opinion. MSNBC has also been known to use propaganda in their reports. Contrary to Fox News though, they are left-handed or democratic. This influences their viewpoints and what they choose to broadcast, also how they spin their information. Although news stations still do not tell the entire truth in all of their reports, it is not the same type of propaganda that was used in the World War II era. Propaganda in the 1936 Berlin Olympics, World War II, and Japanese internment camps changed the way that propaganda can be used today. All three events had such a major impact on society's beliefs that people cannot use propaganda in the same way because now citizens are aware.